everybody and welcome back to another episode with Addy the Creator. I find it pretty crazy how we even need this holiday as a reminder that we are living organisms, living on a planet that we are dependent on for life. We humans just sort of built our own artificial world filled with piles of meaningless work, concrete buildings, material objects, not to mention the digital world that we just kind of get sucked into for hours each day. So I asked myself, What's a good topic that I can bring to your awareness that can help transform your worldview and make you feel more interconnected with Mother Earth? Well, I got it. What better wisdom to tap into than the people who've been in deep relationship with the land for hundreds of years? Indigenous people. Now, I want to be clear here when I talk about indigenous people because there are a lot of stereotypes that people tend to paint. Many view them as savages, as uncivilized, and as people of the past. However, they are still here today. Many are still carrying on their traditional practices and ways of life, and they are a great source of ancient wisdom and insight. Now, the practice of understanding another person's history and experience is very much an underrated value today. Our school system tends to overlook the fact that native people were here before the colonizers came. The settlers had this belief that the land in use by indigenous people was empty and unused, and so capitalism grew from the stealing of their land. They also saw these people as threatening and of a lesser breed, and so they killed them brutally, raped the women, took men in as prisoners, and forced many to assimilate into American society. Tragically, their beautiful stories of embodied connection have been demonized and silenced by patriarchal colonial and Judeo-Christian ideologies, and the rich experiences have been suppressed and in many cases extinguished. The history of colonial violence has had severe consequences for the health of not only native people, but the well-being of the entire natural world, because it led to a profound historical disruption of human environment relations, which led to many of the problems that we are facing today. It is our responsibility to decolonize and embody the wisdom of indigenous people, which can strengthen our emotional bond with nature, which is what is needed to restore the planet in these times. I envision this video working alongside native communities who have been dispossessed and are working towards decolonization. In no way am I speaking for native people, but rather with them whose struggles are nestled within racial capitalism and settler colonialism. Okay, so incorporating indigenous wisdom into our worldview requires complete shattering of our most cherished beliefs and unconscious assumptions. Christian beliefs of the Garden of Eden, with this emphasis on human eviction from the garden, disconnects us from the human body and nature because at that moment, the human body became a thing of evil and nature became an enemy. This very idea of original sin injects profound notion and shame into one's relationship with their body, nature, and sexuality. Even if you are not Christian, this view has likely impacted your perspective of the world since our society and English language has become disembodied from nature. As a result, the views of Western science have been founded on objective ideologies that sets humans outside the realm of nature. This notion puts our species above all the billions and says that we are the most deserving of Earth's resources. Indigenous people, on the other hand, see no hierarchy of humans above the Earth Rather, they see humans as part of an interconnected system where plants and animals are sentient beings vested with awareness, intelligence, and spirit. Even in their languages, such as in Potawatomi, they have a collective pronoun that doesn't objectify nature as an it or a thing, but rather as a non-human person. This is unlike English, which uses words such as it to put nature outside the realm of moral obligation so that we can treat the earth as a commodity and exploit it indefinitely. Indigenous people know how to look beyond the surface of the material world and connect with the Earth's spiritual essence. They view their land as their home, as their library, pharmacy, source of identity, and future, and see themselves as one with creation itself. So how can we shed our worldview and enter into this new one? Rekindling our natural bond with the world is going to require a fierce peeling away of our colonial conditioning. A cancellation of this subject-object relationship between us and the environment, and the absolution of the multiple levels of violence that mediate the relation of human power over the world. Also, it will require a shedding of the conditioned beliefs that say we are more intelligent and better than other natural beings. We must also change the way that we take from the world. We can do this by being conscious of where we deploy our dollars, so taking part in conscious consumerism is the main one, and just choosing to consume less overall. 
Also, when we take from the world, we have to remember to give back to the world. So for example, if you cut down a tree, you plant a tree. Most importantly, it's going to take getting scientists to consider the validity of indigenous knowledge. Now this is like swimming upstream in cold water because they have been so conditioned to be skeptical of even the hardest of data that bending their minds towards theories that are not verified without graphs or data is pretty tough for them. Organizations such as NOAA have started to do this, however, they have an indigenous knowledge department who works to mitigate and respond to disasters in the Great Pacific. They were able to create models of the El Nino event, which led to more sustainable decisions and trust between the communities. Now, most importantly, changing our worldview is going to require a change in heart. For me, who is a marine biologist, love is the very first word to cross my mind anytime I think of marine life. I leave my ego at the surface and enter into a completely different world when I put my head beneath the surface of the water. Every action I take underwater is therefore guided by respect and by love. I step outside the sense of myself as a contained being. I am no longer a solid center, but part of an unending field of entwined energies that connects to another and greater life force. And you don't have to travel anywhere to get a relief from your persona and to get into touch with this deeper sense of being. Walking barefoot on the earth, drinking cold water, eating fresh fruit, breathing in warm air. These basic, often unconscious daily acts are not in fact mundane, but rather divine and connect us to the more than human world. Alrighty, that's all I have for you guys this week. Make sure you hit subscribe down below, give it a thumbs up, share it with a friend, and I'll see you soon for episode four.